Okay, this is one that my students did pretty well on, okay? It was a proof, okay? We're going to try and prove that the derivative of cos theta is minus sine theta, and we're going to be proving it from first principles. Now, I have actually got the formula book here to show that there are lots of things in here that can be helpful. We've been told that to differentiate from first principles, to find f dash x, it is the same as working out the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. So we're going to try and find out, with our f of x being equal to cos theta, we know that the derivative of cos theta, sorry, that should say f theta there, is the same as f dash theta. So we're going to do our whole question with theta, not with x. So our f dash theta is going to be equal to, you must make sure you're writing limits here. If you don't do this, you lose a mark. The limit as h tends to 0 of cos of theta plus h, that's this bit, minus the cos of theta, all divided by h. Got to keep writing limit at the beginning. Limit as h goes to 0. We're going to expand this using the formula for cos of a plus b. That's cos theta cos h minus sine theta, sine h, minus cos theta, all divided by h. We're now going to take the cos theta here and we're going to factorise. You've got to keep writing limit at the beginning. We're taking it as the limit of this approach is. So I'm going to do a, skip a step. I'm going to do cos theta and I'm going to factorise. So I've got cos theta multiplied by cos h minus 1 cos theta, all divided by h. And then here I've got minus sine theta multiplied by sine h a over h. And that's because I want to use this stuff that I've got here. Okay. Now we can say as h tends to 0, cos h minus 1 over h tends to 0, and sine h over h tends to 1. So we're actually taking limits here, so I no longer need to write this bit down. So I get cos theta multiplied by 0 minus sine theta multiplied by 1, which is minus sine theta. So I've shown that f dash theta is equal to this. Hence, the derivative with respect to theta of cos theta is minus sine theta. Five easy marks there. Question 10. A spherical mint of radius 5 millimetres is placed in the mouth and sucked. Four minutes later, the radius of the mint is three millimetres. In a simple model, the rate of decrease of the radius of the mint is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. Using this model and all the information given, find an equation linking the radius of the mint and the time. You should define the variables that you use. OK, so this is a question that I know my students haven't had a look at just yet. Um, but the first thing we're going to try and um, break down is it says here, it says the rate of decrease of the radius is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. Rate of decrease of the radius. So I guess what we should say here is we're going to say let the radius equal r because it's asking us to define the variables that we use. So the rate of the radius, this means rate of the radius, and it's saying that it's a decrease, OK? So if it's a decrease, we know that it's going to be proportional to a negative, and it says it's inversely proportional to the square of the radius. So it's going to be inversely proportional to the square of the radius. You may have been familiar with this from GCSE. What this can be written as is that the rate of decrease is going to be equal to minus k over r squared, where k is a constant. OK? This is the rate. The minus says it's a decrease, and it's inversely proportional to the square of the radius. We're now going to solve this equation by using separating the variables. So I'll multiply it by r squared here. So I'm going to integrate r squared with respect to r, and then I'm going to integrate minus k with respect to t. When I integrate this, I get a third r cubed equals minus kt plus c. And I think that's enough for it at this stage, is it? 
um, find an equation linking the radius of the minute and the time r. I think we're probably going to need to do a little bit more because it tells us some things at the beginning. Yes, it does. A spherical mint of radius 5 millimetres is placed in the mouth and sucked. Four minutes later, when t is equal to 4, the radius is equal to 3. So let's actually do some substituting in that we've got here. We know that when it started off, to begin with, when time was zero, the radius was five. Uh, radius, let's say in millimeters, and let's say let time in minutes equal t. So we know that when it started off, the radius was five. So I'm gonna substitute those in. So I've got a third times five cubed equals minus k times zero plus c. So c is equal to 125 over 3. We also know that after 4 minutes, the radius was 3. So I can substitute those in. So that's a third times 3 cubed equals minus 4k plus 125 over 3. If we then solve that equation that we've got, that's um, on the left-hand side, 9, so that's 9 equals minus 4k plus 125 over 3. Solving this, we get 9 minus 125 over 3 divided by minus 4. We get that k is equal to 49 over 6. Next part it says, oh, we better actually write what the formula is. So we get a third r cubed equals minus 49 over 6 t plus 125 over 3. There it is, our equation that's linking those two things together. That was all part A of the question. Part B of the question. Hence, find the total time taken for the mint to completely dissolve. Give your answer in minutes and seconds to the nearest second. So to completely dissolve means the radius is zero. So the left-hand side is zero. So I get minus 49 over 6t plus 125 over 3. When I solve this equation, I've got 49 over 6t equals 125 over 3. So that's 125 over 3 multiplied by 6 divided by 49. And I get that t is equal to 5.10204. There's a button in your calculator that looks like this, dot, comma, comma, comma. That's a quick way of changing this from minutes into minutes and seconds. If I press that, I get that it is five minutes and six, five minutes and seven seconds when you round it. Nope, I rounded it wrong. Five minutes and six seconds. So a limitation that we might have of this particular model, there's many different things you could say. You can say the model doesn't consider how the mint is being sucked. It doesn't consider whether the mint is being bitten. Um, it's not valid for times greater than five minutes and six seconds. Um, it says that after it dissolves, it makes out that the radius of the mint is going to be negative. There's lots of things. Maybe we could say something like, I'll write down this one. It doesn't, um, why don't we say, it assumes, it assumes that, let's write down the first one we said, it doesn't take into account. There's many, many things you could say for that one. Okay, question 11. We'll take a break after question 12. Nice, easy first one. It's just asking us to do this as partial fractions. It wants you to find out the constants A, B, and C. I'm just going to put the lights on. It's got really dark in here. We've got 1 plus 11x minus 6x squared all over x minus 3, 1 minus 2x is equal to A plus B over x minus 3 
plus c over 1 minus 2x. There's many ways you could do this. I probably am going to do some substitution. So I'm going to have 1 plus 11x minus 6x squared is equal to a. People forgot to multiply it by these bits. x minus 3, 1 minus 2x, plus b gets multiplied by 1 minus 2x, plus c, which gets multiplied by x minus 3. So it looks like I can do some nice substitution. If I say that x is equal to 3, then this one's going to go, and this one's going to go. The left-hand side, when x is equal to 3, I get 1 plus 33 minus 6 times 9. I get minus 20. The only thing I get left with is this. So that's 1 minus 6, which is minus 5. So I get minus 5b. So b is equal to... Four. If I substitute in x equals a half, it's going to get rid of this one and it's going to get rid of this one. So let's put a half in. So it's 1 plus 11 times a half minus 6 times a half squared. So you get 5 is equal to, that was just substituting in here. That one's going to go, that one's going to go. You get a half minus 3, you get minus 5 over 2c. When you do 5 divided by that, you get that c is equal to minus 2. So to find out what a is, we can probably just do some comparing coefficients. So I'm going to compare, I think I'm going to compare the x squareds. For the x squareds, I've got minus 6 on the left-hand side. And for the a part, I would have minus 2x times x, which is going to give me minus 2x squared. So I get minus 2a. If I solve that, I get that a is equal to 3. There are lots and lots and lots of ways you could do this one. You could have compared other coefficients. The reason I picked the minus 2x squared times a is just because it was the only one that had the x squared as it. So that has told me now what this can be written as. The next part of the question gives us a function, and it says prove that f of x is a decreasing function. Well, it's the same function that was in part a, so you should probably use what part a was actually doing. We've now got that our function 1 plus 11x minus 6x squared over x minus 3, 1 minus 2x is the same as a plus 4 over x minus 3 minus 2 over 1 minus 2x. And we want to show that it is a decreasing function. Okay, A decreasing function is one where its gradient is less than zero. So I'm going to find out what f dash x is. Okay, really quickly, I'm just going to rewrite this. So I've got 3 plus 4 lots of x minus 3 to the minus 1, minus 2, 1 minus 2x to the minus 1. So we're just going to differentiate this using the chain rule. This, when you differentiate it, it goes. The next bit, when you differentiate it, you've got the 4. You're going to multiply it by the power, which you're going to pull down. You're going to reduce the power by 1 and you're going to multiply by the derivative of x, which is just 1. Then I've got minus 2. I'm going to bring the power down, which is minus 1. I'm going to reduce the power by 1, which is minus 2. And I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the blah, which is inside, which is minus 2. So I get minus 4 x minus 3 to the power of minus 2. Now I've got minus 2 times minus 1, so that's, my, that's 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, 1 minus 2x to the minus 2. So I've got minus 4 over x minus 3 squared, minus 4 over 1 minus 2x squared. That's two of your three marks. We need to show that this is a decreasing function. Now, x minus 3 squared will be greater than or equal to 0 for all values of x. And the same for the 1 minus 2x squared, because when you square something, it's always going to be greater than that. Hence, f dash of x is less than 0, because each of these bits are being multiplied by negatives. It's going to be less than 0 for all values of x. So f of x is a decreasing function. And I'm actually going to just show you that on Desmos because I think it's interesting to see what it looks like. So we've got 1 plus 11x minus 6x squared.
1 plus 11x minus 6x squared over x minus 3, 1 minus 2x. Weird. Everywhere you look, the function has a negative gradient. It's like if it was a slide, as you go across, you're always sliding down. You're never ever going uphill for anywhere on this particular graph. Even though we were interested in it, it's just x is greater than 3. Okay, we are going to try and fit in question 12, and then I will do the last two questions separately, okay? Question 12a, we're going to do a proof question. Lots of people made a bit of a meal of this. We're going to try and prove that 1 minus cos 2 theta is equal to tan theta sine 2 theta. Looks like we're going to have to do something to do with this double angle that we've got here. I probably think I would start with the right-hand side. So I've got tan theta sine 2 theta. Well, I know that's going to be tan theta is the same as sine theta over cos theta. And I know that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. And now I can clearly see that the cos thetas are going to cancel. So I get 2 sine squared theta. Now, we know something, and you should do this somewhere on your page. Cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So 2 sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta. As long as you've got this somewhere on your page, you can just say 1 minus cos 2 theta, and you've got that done immediately. I would definitely keep that on your page because that's something that you want to use. Three marks, done. Look how short it is. 12b. Okay, this is a hard question. First of all, take note of the range. The range is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. We've got this particular equation here, and it's definitely going to be related to part A because of this word hence. It's telling us it has to be related to that same thing that we've got there. So I'm going to just write out what we've got. We've got sec squared x minus 5, and then I've got 1 minus cos 2x equals 3 tan squared x sine 2x. Now, we need to try and think, how is this related to this? If it helps you, rewrite the one at the top, but replace the thetas with x's. Okay, well, clearly I've got a 1 minus cos 2x, which I can replace with a tan x sine 2x. So I've got sec squared x minus 5. I'm going to replace this with my tan x sine 2x equals... 3 tan squared x sine 2x. Okay, now when you do cancelling here, you need to take a note of it because remember, that thing that you cancel when it's equal to 0 will be able to still be a, a solution. So I'm going to cancel a tan x sine 2x, a tan x sine 2x. That was a tan x sine 2x. That could be equal to 0, okay? The only time that this is equal to 0 is tan x is equal to 0. In other words, if x is equal to 0, or sine 2x is equal to 0. In other words, if x is equal to 0. So this thing that we've got here, because we cancelled it, the solution, we need to remember we add in at the end, is that x is equal to 0. So I'm left with sec squared x minus 5 equals 3 tan x. Well, you better have your identities ready to go. Sec squared is the same as... 1 plus tan squared x. Oh look, it's a pseudo quadratic. So I've got tan squared x minus 3 tan x, uh, and I've got 1 minus 5 is minus 4. If you want to, you can use your equation solver, and we can see that tan x now, because this is a quadratic, tan x is either equal to 4, or tan x is equal to minus 1. Let me just double check that's right. Uh, yeah, we get tan x minus 4 and plus 1, yeah. Solving this one, you get that x is equal to minus pi over 4. Solving this one, you do the inverse tan of 4. Double check you're in radians mode. I'm not. Inverse tan of 4. And it wants it to three decimal places, so you're going to do 1.326. So you should have one, two, three solutions. Don't forget you're also going to add in that x is equal to 0. Look how much work this was compared to the pages and pages of work that some of you guys have done. Okay, just a couple more questions and then we're finished.